A huge decision that you see there in overtime when the 49ers decided to take the ball first. With the new overtime rules, a lot of people thought that was the wrong move. We'll get into that in a moment, but first, let's take a listen to both teams talking about strategy there. None of us have a ton of experience of it, but we went through all the analytics and talked with those guys, and we just thought it'd be better. We wanted the ball third. Um, if both teams matched and scored, we wanted to be the ones who had the chance to go win, and um, we got that field goal, so we knew we had to hold them to at least to a field goal, and if, if we did, then we felt it was in our hands after that. I didn't even know about the new overtime, uh, playoff overtime rule, so it was a surprise to me. Um, yeah, I didn't even really even know what was going on in terms of that. I, I, they put it on this the scoreboard and everyone was like, oh, even if you score, they get a chance still, so. You know what, I didn't even realize that the the playoff rules were different in overtime, so I I assumed you just want the ball because you score a touchdown and win, but I guess that's not the case. No, we haven't talked about it, no. Hmm, uh, Mina, what should we make of all this? Um, okay, well, first I'll start with what Kyle said um, in terms of his thinking there. He talked about the analytics that San Francisco, why how they arrived at that conclusion. Um, you know, when the rule was changed, I had some conversations with folks around the leagues on different teams, got a variety of different opinions. Uh, Seth Wilder, who covers analytics for us, uh, also surveyed analytics departments on teams around the league and found a pretty even split. I felt at the beginning of the game, and I put this on the Internet, so I have the records out there. I'm not Monday morning quarterbacking. Hmm. I would have taken the ball second so that you don't give Patrick Mahomes all four downs because hmm. he has the information of knowing, you know, whether or not they need to drive the field. I also think, however, um, believing that if it's a tie, you want the advantage in sudden death, it's not crazy. It's why I think so many teams were split on this. What's far less defensible, in my view, is the fact that the, none of the Niners players were aware of the rule change. Yeah. I mean, you're going to the Super Bowl. You got two weeks to talk about this. I, I was actually shocked to hear those players say that, especially in contrast with a number of the Chiefs players who described how they were familiarized with the rules and prepared for it. So that, to me, was actually more embarrassing than the decision, which I do think was defensible, even if it's not what I would have done. Yeah, I mean, not only two weeks, you have six months to go over these situations as a football yeah. team in team <laughs> meeting. So I was shocked. I think it's crazy. I, I, I felt that in the moment. I think it's crazy for two reasons. Number one, Mina pointed out, you don't give the quarterback and the football team on the opposite sideline four downs it changes every single play call not only that you make but what the other team could potentially make if, if San Francisco had the ball second maybe they run the ball in that third and yeah. four instead of throwing the football make, mm -hmm. maybe Brock Purdy doesn't try to just throw the ball to a safe spot and drills it to the receiver because he has to and the other reason is in the analytics I feel the same way that I did about the Dan Campbell field goals in overtime it's more than numbers who are we and who are we playing and how are we playing? Mahomes had just gone down the field in regulation in their two-minute drill. Mark, they didn't stop them. They ran out of time, hmm. okay? And the fact that you are going against a defense that is playing lights-out football. So I think because of who you're playing has to be the kind of the swing of knowing, okay, he's hot right now, and he's the best in the league. Yeah, guys, I hate to even ask this question because I think it's – very well noted that we're all big fans of Kyle Shanahan's scheme, his play calling, all of that. But Marcus, this is now the third Super Bowl where Shanahan's teams have blown double digit leads. Yeah. What did you make of his game plan? Yeah, during that second half, I tweeted out that this is it's almost like he was playing to just be it was very vanilla and he was hoping that his defense was mm. going to stop the Kansas City Chiefs, the aggressive nature of play calling was my issue in the second half. And every, when I tweeted it out, everybody was like, well, he ain't running the ball, so what do you mean run the clock? Kyle Shanahan, to me, felt like he was playing with, with, with caution. He felt like it, it felt like it wasn't the Super Bowl. It was a game that they needed to win to advance further. Man, open up the open up the bar, man. Pour every th drink you got in there to try to get points on the board. Because as much as we talk about the overtime decision, you called that, you made that call because you wanted to be aggressive. Your play calling was not like that, in my opinion, in the second half. We saw a throwback for a touchdown in the first half. We saw getting Brock Purdy on the move. We saw a bunch of bootlegs. We're getting him in space. In the second half, a lot of that went to, went away, and I was scratching my head as to why he was being so vanilla offensively. 
You know, I, I didn't have an issue with this play calling. I, I think there was some lack of preparation for the blitz, but you can really attribute a lot of those unblocked pressures to different players. Sometimes it was the offensive line. Sometimes it was the skill players whatnot. Uh, I did have issue with some of the issues or some of the decisions from a game management perspective, and I, I'm like a broken record. You guys have heard me complain about this at various times, not even this season, or but over the course of Kyle Shanahan, who I admire so much as a play caller, his tenure in San Francisco. At the end of the first half, when the Chiefs were driving, timeout. I did not understand why he wouldn't call a timeout to get an extra possession. You had a kicker who we saw drill a 57-yard field mm -hmm. goal. And this is just something I, I wasn't surprised because I've seen him do it a million times, a lack of aggression from a game manager perspective. But I, I was disappointed nonetheless. And then when we look back at this game and see how close the margins were, a decision like yeah. that does loom large to me as a crucial error. We talked about it on the broadcast at the end of the first half meeting, and Brock Purdy was hot. That, that's when they were starting to hit crossers, so I agree with that. Yeah. I don't, Marcus, here's my thing, though. The fourth down that he goes for yeah. in the red zone and they complete it to yeah. Kittle, that one surprised me. I thought he was just going to take the points and tie the football game. So, but Dan, Dan, I don't, go ahead. Dan to, to your point, hold on one, one second. To your point, I 100% agree. And that was a, a, a aggressive call. I'm talking about the nature in which you call play. Where is Kittle isolated one-on-one? -on -one? Where is getting him against somebody and trying to create a mismatch or an advantage? Where is the Brandon IU double move when you need to get a chunk play down the field? Where is the reverse to Debo Samuel? Where is the Christian McCaffrey screen on the edge? Those are the things I'm talking about. I'm not talking about what, to your point, the fourth down was aggressive. I just didn't get enough of, of yeah. feeling like the three-pointer needed to be made. Let's get Adam Schefter back in here for some top stories. And Adam, brutal moment last night with Dre Greenlaw. What do we know about his injury? Well, Laura, the moment you saw him go down with that Achilles injury and be ruled out, you knew that it was going to be a ruptured Achilles, and that's exactly what it turned out to be. Kyle Shanahan said after the game that he went down in this particular play, charging onto the field, just a devastating blow to Dre Greenlaw, to the Niners' defense, to everybody involved didn't come back and now faces months of rehabilitation to try to get back for the 2024 season in which the Niners will have a number of key free agents. There are some of the names and the players that they'll be hoping to re-sign. Javon Kinlaw stands out of that group. Uh, Randy Gregory, Chase Young, a lot of players up front that they're going to have to make decisions on and they're not going to be able to keep everybody, unfortunately for them, as much as they would like. And of course, we started this season with O's the Mentalist in Florham Park, New Jersey with the Jets when his first guest, one of his first guests, turned out to be then Jets wide receiver, McCole Hardman, who he talked about the upcoming season and what they envisioned for Super Bowl 58. Super Bowl Sunday, I want you to picture this, take a step forward, and I want you to imagine you've got a crystal ball in your hand, you see the future, tell us, who do you see the Jets playing in this year's Super Bowl? Say it. 49ers. 49ers. And I'm putting you on the spot here. We're going to win. We know we're going to win. What's the final score going to be? 31 and 21. Yeah. Because when all the pieces come together in a season, it can be absolute perfection, folks. Because that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the Jets and the 49ers. 31 to 21. Oh, that's crazy. Hey, that's crazy. I mean, Miko was part of it, Adam, and <laughs> just on a different team. Yeah, well, that was, again, the first team that O's started with in his tour of camps this summer, and that was one of the very first players he called upon, and that was the first player he asked for a Super Bowl prediction from, and it just turned out to be the player <laughs> that was dealt from the Jets to the Chiefs who wound up scoring the game-winning touchdown the Chiefs win, and of course, as we predicted, O's wins. That's crazy.